Onwards, I think we should move to see that this is 1985, September 26th. And I think we'll move on. Before Nardwar will become one of the most recognizable Canadian interviewers thanks to a decorated 30 plus year career, the size hometown of Vancouver, British Columbia, named September 29th Nardwar Day. And now, the moment we've been waiting for. Will you please welcome to the stage BC Entertainment's Hall of Fame's latest star, Nardwar. Before Nardwar would suffer through some health scares, including a stroke in 2015, that would see some of his big name friends from all over the music industry wish him well. Before Nardwar would have over 196,000 followers on Twitter, 686,000 followers on Instagram, and over 1.8 million subscribers on YouTube at the time of this recording. Let's do a thought experiment for a moment. Imagine you're a world famous rapper, pretty great, right? Now imagine you're a world famous rapper being asked a series of bizarre questions by a strange looking dude in glasses with an infectious grin and a tartan hat. What do you do? This might sound like a crazy hypothetical, but it's one a ton of celebrities in the music industry have been confronted with for over 30 years now. Because Nardwar the human serviette never fails to get his man or his interview, even if they do sometimes blow up in his face. Guns Garcia. Yo, he know too much. I can't do this. What can you do? Nardwar is a wide-eyed Vancouver native who, after decades in the game, is not only a Canadian icon, but globally recognized thanks to his unique brand of unbelievably researched interviews that are perfect to consume in the age of the internet. And while not everyone always gets in on the joke, a whole bunch of celebrities walk away feeling like they just had the best interview of their life. Your research is second to none, second to none. And I can only imagine that you're, you probably do the same kind of research with every man that you interview. So that's, it's pretty impressive, man. What's poppin' guys, it's your boy Marlon Palmer, back at it again with a brand new video. This one taking a look at the life of Nardwar, otherwise known as the human serviette here for you on Before They're Famous. Now, he might not look it like at all, but Nardwar is a true OG in the music industry. Just ask Snoop Dogg. This is our 10th interview in 19 years. Mm, we gotta catch up, we owe nine. In fact, my man is so unique at what he does that even Jay-Z himself personally asked to be interviewed by Nardwar when he heard that they were at the same venue. But who is this guy and where did he come from? Today you're gonna find out. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram at DadDubinFly to let me know what you thought. And let's get into the story. Um, where did you sort of hang out? Where would Nardwar be when he was, you know, 16, 17, going to see all ages punk shows? And Well, actually, I was in my basement because I was scared to go to the gigs. Nardwar was born John Ruskin on July 5th, 1968 in Vancouver, British Columbia, to a mother named Olga, who was a journalist, and a father named Vernon, who was an engineer. Most of his childhood is steeped in mystery. After all, he's usually the one asking the questions whenever there's a camera pointed at him, and he's very rarely ever done any interviews of his own. What we do know is that Nardwar has always always been something of an entertainer. As early as grade 6, he entered a speaking contest at school and managed to entertain everyone with an enticing story about something as simple as a cat engaging with his audience so well that he won the competition. As a teenager in 1986, he adopted the name Nardwar and insists that it has no special meaning. He simply wanted to come up with a name that sounded dumb and stupid like a whole bunch of other people in the music industry. He conducted his first ever interview in September of 1985 in a classroom in Hillside Secondary School in West Vancouver, which he was attending as a student. His first subjects were from the rock band Poisoned, who were literally just coming off stage from having performed at the school dance which Nardwar helped book after asking his fellow students who they wanted to see most that night. Always been a mover and shaker, this guy. They should have, they should have done this. They should have started on time. Should have done this. Oh, that. Oh, 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 He's simply being his genuine self. Nardwar learned how to become such a good journalist and researcher by watching his mother work. Olga was a journalist in the 1950s who became a high school teacher and then got involved with cable access television in the 70s and 80s. As a reporter in Vancouver, she had her own show called Our Pioneers and Neighbors 
in which she interviewed residents of the city's neighborhoods. Olga wasn't getting paid for the interview, she was simply doing it because she loved to help tell other people's stories. Her passion for her craft transferred to her young son, who formed the same type of genuine curiosity and enthusiasm for other people that are essential for a good journalist. Thanks to the tireless efforts of his mom, Nardwar learned quickly that everybody has a story, and it's to interview his job to pull that out of their subject, something that he would come to excel at. After getting his start in the late 80s, Nardwar would strike up a working relationship with the Vancouver College radio station, CITR, by hounding his program director until they offered him a show. When they finally relented, they offered him one minute of airtime on Friday nights. He jumped at the chance. Getting him into the studio for one minute of content was easy. Getting him out after one minute wasn't so simple, which meant over time, the show eventually became longer and longer. Welcome to CITR FM 102, Cable 102, Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada, a campus community station you can join. Over those decades in the 90s, Nardwar perfected his interview format taking inspiration from other people like Arsenio Hall. Most of his early CITR interviews were primarily sound only, but this collection houses some of his most rare interviews with some gigantic acts like Sonic Youth in 1991, Motorhead in 1999, and even Kurt Cobain from 1994, just weeks before his death. So Kurt, um, I waited outside. How was the Toronto show? How did that go? Because I was in Toronto at that time when you played at Maple Leaf Gardens. Don't say that I'm making any kind of ethnic stereotypes. I'm not making any stereotypes because they're not PC. Do you remember that show at all, Kurt? No. <laughs> it was also during his radio station show that he came up with his signature sign-off. Doot, doot, loot, doot. Doot, doot. You just gotta, it just doesn't feel right unless you end it. Keep on rocking in the free world and doot, doot, loot, do. Do, do. <laughs> it's a noise that he used to hear an organist play at the end of hockey games that he attended as a kid. When Nardwar would have to let a caller know that their time was up on the show, he'd make that noise as a way of prompting them instead of simply dropping the call like most radio stations. And now look at how iconic this guy. A legend. By 1996, students from the Vancouver Film School built Nardwar his own website to host his interviews from, a site that he still uses to this day. Nardwar's turning point came with his first Snoop Dogg interview. It took place on set for a movie called Bones, where Snoop was dressed as a pimp straight out of the 70s. At first, Snoop is pretty suspect about this guy, but when Nardwar starts bringing out his trademark gifts, showing just how much effort he puts into his craft by digging deep into Snoop's past, suddenly Snoop is all in. One interview later, he was telling Nardwar, I'm gonna have to give you a shout out on my next album, so look on the credits on the back. A double shout out to my nephew from Vancouver, you know what I'm saying? The Canuck, Mr. Nard, stay hard, Ward. Well, thanks so much, Snoop. Despite receiving compliments like that on the regular from some of the world's biggest stars, Nardwar remains an extremely humble individual. He credits his community at CITR with keeping him as popular as he is and assisting him with all of his incredible research. Over time, social media has caused a shift in power dynamics between artists and journalists, but in an age where everyone understands the power of PR and spin, Nardwar subverts the process and comes up with some truly original creations. Chauncey. Yo, oh, you even know from a block? Whoa! With the advent of YouTube, he managed to break through to a larger audience, and his very first upload was a former US Vice President, Dan Quayle, who could not seem to figure out who the Prime Minister of Canada was at the time he was asked. Hi, Mr. Quayle. Who's the Prime Minister of Canada? Prime, Prime Minister of Canada would just had the uh, President uh, Clinton up there for a uh, address, and uh, it's one thing that George Bush didn't do. It's a clip that would be perfect for this viral age that we live in. But when Nardwar originally shot the clip back in the 90s and sent it to media outlets all over Canada, not a single one picked it up. Man, how times have changed. These days, his interviews average hundreds of thousands of views on YouTube, and his total views played is sitting at more than 247 million at the time of this recording. After 30 years of success and an epic number of unforgettable interviews, Nardwar only has one last interview on his bucket list, Canadian rock star Neil Young, who Nardwar says he could die happy after finally getting to ask a few questions. So here's hoping that happens sooner rather than later, especially considering that Neil Young, well, he isn't exactly a spring chicken anymore. I'm still on a quest to get a hold of Neil Young. And just in case you're wondering, don't expect to see Nardwar branching out into other mediums like podcasting anytime soon. He's been asked by multiple people to consider putting a pitch together for more universal exposure, but each time he shuts it down, stating that he's happy with his working relationship with CITR. When it comes to a dude like Nardwar, loyalty is a huge factor. 
great. All right. <laughs> Thanks so much, Little B. Really appreciate it. It's amazing. As for the rest of the story, well, that's for another video, for another time. After all, this is Before They're Famous. Be sure to follow the series on Instagram at Before They're Famous to vote on what you'd like to see next. And in closing, what else is there left to say but doot 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 doot. Doot doot. Yeah, you know the rest. Bye.